on today's Daily Slab, we are going to talk about Joel Embiid's bad day, Nikola Jokic's good day, and the Spurs franchise changing day. So sit back, relax, enjoy today's Daily Slab. Welcome everyone to the Daily Slab. I am Nate, and our trender for today is Joel Embiid. So before Sunday's game, seven of the last eight MVP winners had failed to make it to a championship game or to win a championship. After Sunday's Celtics-Sixers game, that number rose 8 of 8 uh, after Embiid lost. And while that's unfortunate, and there have been guys that won championships after said MVPs, Giannis won a championship after he won a couple MVPs, uh, Curry won a championship after he won an MVP. He also won a championship when he won the MVP in the same year. That was the last one when that happened. But by and large, these guys have had disappointing ends to their MVP careers, and Embiid is no different. So he shot 5 for 18 from the field for only 15 points and a minus 28 plus minus on the game. That's not good. He was When he was on the floor... His team was outscored by 28 points. If that sounds bad, it is. If his 15 points sounds low, it is. In fact, that was his third 15 point or less game this playoffs. You have a guess at how many he had in the regular season? It was just two. Two games, one of them which he did not play the full game. He would have probably surpassed that number if he had played the full game. I think he played like 20 minutes when he usually plays 33-36. So really, he had one game in the regular season where he scored 15 points or less, and yet he did it three times in the playoffs, one time being in the biggest game of his season when they needed to win to move on or lose and go home. He played terribly. Terribly. And uh, this is after winning the MVP. And that terrible game, well, not great for his market. You can see here is 2014 Prism Base PSA 10 and a one-month trend year. And it's way down, 41%, dropped 119 bucks, uh, And that's after winning the MVP. But again, MVPs are nice, but it's all about championships. And if you're not getting there, people... They're just not going to care very much about MVPs, which is why a championship for Nikola Jokic this year is important. All right, moving on to who's hot, who's not, and moving on to Nikola Jokic. We tied him into the last section. We're bringing up him today. And it, who's hot, who's not, and it is who's hot because Nikola Jokic had one of the best playoff games you will ever see. Scored 34 points the other night against the Lakers. Added in 21 rebounds, added in 14 assists, uh, shot 12 for 17 from the field, 3 for 3 from 3, uh, perfect from free throw, I believe. He was incredible. Incredible. Dominant. And the reason I bring this up is because you can see this little thing from StatMuse here. Here are all of the 30-point, 20-rebound, and... 10-plus assist games in the history of the NBA for the playoffs. The entire history of the NBA. Players that have 30-plus points, 20-plus rebounds, and 10-plus assists in a playoff game. It is. Kareem on 4-13-1970. Bucks against the Knicks. 38 points, 23 rebounds, 11 assists. Then you've got Wilt on March 22nd, 1967. Uh, 76ers against the Cincinnati Royals, who don't exist anymore. And you have 37 points, 27 rebounds, and 11 assists. And then you have Nikola Jokic on June 11th, 2021. Nuggets versus the Suns. 32 points, 20 rebounds, 10 assists. And then, of course, Jokic did it again tonight. So, in the history of the NBA, there have been four games where there have been 30 points, 20 rebounds, 10 assists, triple doubles, in a playoff game. Wilt did one. Kareem did another. Two of the best big men in the history of the NBA. If not the two best big men in the history of the NBA. And now Nikola Jokic has done it twice. Uh, that is amazing. Amazing. The last ones to have done it before Jokic was in 1970. 51 years later, he did it. And then two years after he did it for the first time in 51 years, he did it again. Uh, he really is in a class of his own right now. He's just, it's impressive to watch for a guy that's not 
overly athletic and doesn't look like he'd be that dominant, and yet he is absolutely dominant. And we're, we're really watching, you know, you, you think to yourself, oh, man, it would have been fun to watch Will. It would have been fun to watch Kareem. Well, we're watching a guy who is doing things that Will and Kareem did, but he's doing it more. He's done it twice as much as these other two guys or as much as these two guys combined, which is incredible. And then if you look at their prices, you know, Jokic, two-time MVP, going for a championship this year, uh, putting up stats that only Kareem and Wilt have done. And you look at his prices compared to Kareem and Wilt, you look at the all-time prices for Jokic, and you've gotten 2015 NT Platinum Rookie Auto 101 PSA 9. Sold for $61,200 back in 2021. $61,200 is a healthy price, but we're talking about a dude who now has two MVPs, just put up another 30-20-10 triple-double in the playoffs, and is hoping to make a finals this year and win it. We will see if that happens, obviously. But $61,200 compared to the all-time sales of Wilt, which is a 1961 Fleer Rookie PSA 9 PWCCS there, top 5%, for $670,000 back in June of 2022. And then you have a Kareem Abdul-Jabbar 1986 Fleer sticker. Not even a Kareem Rookie, but 1986 Fleer sticker PSA 10 that sold for $266,400 back in August of 2022. So not a rookie sticker going for that much, uh, a rookie Wilt going for as much as that did, and then there is Jokic, which is a fraction of the price of the other two guys. And obviously the other two guys are all-time greats, and uh, you know everyone knows them, and they're old cards. They don't have much as many cards printed of them as some modern guys do, but Jokic was a second rounder that also didn't have a ton of rookie cards, and so he is a little bit closer, I would say, in terms of what he has to a Wilt and a Kareem, then you could say like Victor Weminyamba will have because he will have a million cards. So it's just kind of cool to see um, the price difference there despite Nikola Jokic maybe making a name for himself as one of the best big men ever. And then lastly, our post of the day, and we just talked about Victor Weminyamba, and we're going to talk about him again because the Spurs had a franchise-altering day. They got their third Number one overall pick in franchise history. The first one was David Robinson. The second one was Tim Duncan. And now the third one is Victor Weminyamba. And you can see the price here, uh, post here. Is this the ideal landing spot for him? You know, maybe he goes to Charlotte and it would have been fun with LaMelo Ball. But Charlotte, what have they really done? I don't really trust him. He could have gone to, you know, ends up... Portland was third pick. He, you know, ends up with Damian Lillard. That would have been fun, but... Damian Lillard is 32. Um, you know, who knows how many good years. going to be 33 next year. And who knows how many good years he has left inside of him. Could be three. Could be four. Uh, by the time Victor Weminyamba is, you know, what, 23 years old? Um, so, I don't know. But you go to a Spurs team that has some young guys like Kelton Johnson and Trey Jones. And you add Victor to them. You add, have Greg Popovich getting to coach him. A guy who has coached Tim Duncan. And all of a sudden, it's like, ooh, you know, this is pretty interesting. Yeah, I get the Spurs aren't the most exciting team from like, a, ooh, yeah, the Spurs. You know, it's it's they're kind of boring. They've been kind of boring. Uh, the players they've had, Tim Duncan, not much emotion. Kawhi Leonard, not much emotion. Um, not the most exciting, the exciting team in the world. But, but they've done well at developing young talent, and they've done well at uh, picking number one picks. And now they get a chance at molding Victor Weminyamba in the NBA. So for me personally, I think it was a great spot for Victor. Maybe not as much for the card market. I imagine him being with a Lamelo or a Damian Lillard would have been better, even if it is a you know a Charlotte or a Portland. But from a player development, I think long term, especially with Popovich there, this should work wonders for Victor. And so I'm curious to see how that goes, and I'm curious to see what prices come out for him in the card market, especially the prisms and the selects and optics of the world. All right, one last thing. If you like this video and you want to learn more about the card market, but in written form, you can sign up for our daily slab email. You can go to slabstocks.com. It'll be the first box you see. You put in your email and you get the daily slab email sent to your inbox seven days a week, 365 days a year. 
and most days, all, all days really, there's a, quite a few written content sections in there. Um, looking back at rookie classes or looking at a trender or covering a bit of news that happened the night before or two nights before, whatever it might be. And then there's also curated links from eBay and from PWCC of interesting cards we see ending. So if you want to read about the card market while also seeing some interesting cards that you don't have to go search out yourself, every single day, 365 days a year, you can sign up for that right now at slabstocks.com. Again, the first box you will see. All right, thank you everyone for watching today's Daily Slab. If you enjoyed this video, please click that like button, and I will talk to you tomorrow for the next Daily Slab. See you everyone.